I want to share with you the seven sneaky signs of soul loss that indicate that you might be missing vital pieces of your soul and what to do about it. Sign one, feeling like something is missing. In shitty things happen in life, there are pieces of your soul who peace out, causing you to feel like literal pieces of your soul are missing. When the soul goes through stress, parts of your soul flee to protect themselves. In ancient times, cultures would have a shaman come and help that person reclaim the pieces of their soul that left during trauma within days of the tragedy. But nowadays, we don't go to shamans and healers. We go to therapists and doctors trained to treat the body or the mind, but nobody treats the soul. I was taught in grad school that soul loss was dissociation and that according to the DSM, people who've been through trauma disconnect from vital parts of their personality, memories, and personal characteristics after experiencing a traumatic event. But we were never taught how to get these vital parts of the dissociated self back after, only how to build up other intact parts of their ego, not directly heal it. There were tools for that. Sign two, loss of physical energy or stamina. Losing pieces of your power zaps your energy. Not only can you dissociate from parts of your soul that got too scared to stick around for the rest of the situation you were in, soul loss leaves you feeling depleted and energetically vulnerable. Because I used to feel so happy and playful, full of energy, but for years after the trauma, I couldn't get in touch with any of those parts of my power. Sign three, loss of brightness in one's eyes, smile, or presence. Shakespeare said that eyes are the windows to the soul, and when soul loss happens, some of the eyes light goes out. I notice the change when someone talks about something they're passionate about versus something that drained them or caused them soul loss. And the eyes become dull. Look at pictures of yourself before something tragic that happened and look into the mirror in your eyes after. Sign four, PTSD. Those who've been through a traumatic event often experience post-traumatic stress disorder with symptoms such as difficulty sleeping, emotional detachment, agitation, flashbacks, hypervigilance, mistrust of others, and this happens to more than combat veterans. Think back to my graduate school roommate who was assaulted at the bodega across the street from our apartment. She was always bubbly and bright until the night that she was assaulted by the man in the bodega. My roommate was terrified. She didn't want to lead him back to her apartment across the street and feared he'd barge in after her. So instead, she ran to the train station on the corner of our block and onto the subway. She ended up riding the subway for hours, too afraid to come home in case he followed her or was waiting outside the bodega for her return. After the traumatic event, my roommate became very withdrawn. She stopped sleeping, stopped going out, she stopped talking to the neighbors and began isolating herself. She had recurred flashbacks and even had nightmares. She was never the same after that incident and she never went back to that bodega again. If you've experienced sleepless nights, flashbacks, bad dreams, agitation, anxiety, agoraphobia, or find yourself getting triggers by reminders of trauma, you may be missing a soul part too. Five, memory loss. Some begin forgetting pieces of memory or have difficulty recalling memories from the past surrounding a traumatic event. This phenomenon is described as a psychogenic amnesia, a phenomenon where memory recall becomes challenging surrounding extraneous events from a difficult period in life. When someone's gone through trauma, they may forget entire chunks of childhood, whether they were abused, had parents who fought all the time, or moved around a lot. They can have lost pieces of their soul along with the memories they can't recall. Sign six, feeling stuck. It can feel hard to move forward if you're missing lost pieces of your soul. Many circle back to the same story of trauma where they lost a piece of their power and can't move on. Like my friend Greg, who just couldn't open up in love after feeling betrayed by his ex who cheated on him years before. Greg clung to that story, sabotaging opportunities for pursuing healthy love relationships thereafter because he wasn't able to heal the serious soul wound. Sign seven, attracting the same patterns over and over again. If it's not already shitty enough to experience heartache and hardship in the first place, we often attract the same cycles of suffering like we're on some crazy karmic hamster wheel, like abusive partners if we've been abused as children lovers who are unable to commit, are emotionally unavailable, or who always seem to abandon us when all we want to do is attract healthy relationships. Sometimes we can't shake patterns from our past, and that's why we manifest them in our present and our future. Did you know that those who've experienced childhood trauma are 70% more likely to keep attracting similar cycles of trauma in their adult relationships than those who haven't experienced childhood trauma? Does any of this sound familiar? It's likely you may also have experienced some level of soul loss. And you may have even known some commonalities along those past experiences, which leave you feeling confused and frustrated, especially if you've been trying super hard to make better choices, but still seem to attract the same old cycles of the past. 
Once you understand how much a problem losing pieces of your soul is, and how much it affects your life and your joy and positivity and your energy levels for the rest of your life, it's like the missing pieces of the puzzle as to why you feel changed after trauma start to come together. The good news is you don't have to keep living life feeling depleted, missing your favorite parts of your energy because there's an ancient strategy for claiming your passion, vitality, and joy for life even after heartache and loss. Hi, I'm Kristen Von Fox, and I'm a shamanic practitioner with my background in clinical psychotherapy, and I sure know what it's like to feel changed after trauma, to walk around feeling less alive and like an empty shell of who I used to be, longing for who I was before the bad things that happened in life. And I thought that's just how it was. Trauma changes you, and I'd have to live this way forever, feeling drained, heartbroken, and lost. And despite my training as a psychotherapist, it quickly became clear that I didn't have the tools that were enough to help me or my clients get their power back and heal the very real wounds coming to the surface. I was in search of truth and a way to shift my energy from the past so I could stop attracting the same cycles of loss and help my clients feel more empowered. Instead of stuck, playing out the story of their trauma, I spent the next decade studying ancient indigenous cultures and how our ancestors address wounds of the soul. I found out that a core belief in many indigenous cultures is that when someone goes through trauma, they can lose a piece of their soul. I learned that soul loss is a natural phenomenon that happens as a self-defense mechanism for self-preservation. When parts of the soul dissociate due to trauma, they take with them pieces of your power, or aspects of your personality and your energy, like the ability to trust and open your heart if you've been betrayed, or your confidence if a parent or bully puts you down. I also learned that we can give pieces of our heart and soul away to people we love without even knowing it, leaving an energetic emptiness behind. I knew I couldn't keep living missing important pieces of my power, so I started training with indigenous healers and researching everything I could get my hands on about shamanism and soul loss. I wanted to understand how I could get my power and passion back for life so I'd never have to feel unworthy, unhappy, or stuck again. It wasn't until I studied shamanism and learned about a simple technique called soul retrieval that they started to feel alive again, stopped attracting trauma cycles, and started to see lasting changes in my life. Soul retrieval is an ancient healing practice where lost parts of one's soul are brought back after trauma. Shamans, or the indigenous medicine people, believe that if someone went through a challenging time, that part of their soul could disconnect as a natural defense mechanism to survive the situation. The problem is that after going through a difficult breakup, an accident, argument, or whatever agonizing experience caused the soul loss in the first place, the person would feel dull, changed, depressed, until they were able to be reunited with their lost soul parts. Once I started using soul retrieval, I was full of energy again rather than an empty shell of myself. I was able to reclaim my lost pieces of my soul that left during my marriage and lots of soul parts stuck in time from emotional abandonment and sexual abuse from my childhood. The benefits were amazing. Not only was I feeling more energized, empowered, self-confident, and alive, I was able to reshape the relationships and experiences I was attracting. I was able to reclaim my confidence, my ability to stand up for myself and draw healthy boundaries and attract healthier relationships. The parts of me that trust and want to be touched that had left me when I was abused as a child came back and I became innocent and cuddly again, which drastically improved my relationships and allowed me to, for the first time in my life, really receive love. Soul retrieval brought me back so much vitality, passion, and focus. I shifted directions from psychotherapy to study shamanism and help as many people as possible with the new tools I found. And that's when my clients all started to experience the same levels of breakthroughs as me. Soul retrieval was creating huge shifts for my clients, and that's why I've created the tools for self-healing with soul retrieval, so that anyone who's experienced the weight of soul loss can use this ancient step-by-step -step formula to get their power and passion back, starting with the inner child healing meditation. After you click the link to try the free inner child healing, you'll get a special invitation to go deeper and learn more about how soul retrieval works in my free masterclass, how to get your energy back from the past without suffering through years of therapy with soul retrieval. I share my step-by-step -step program, which not only teaches you the shamanic energy healing basics, it guides you through self-healing with soul retrieval energy clearing, and helps you manifest a new and more abundantly joyful life. With this knowledge, you'll be able to take immediate action on shifting your story, reclaiming your passionate life force, be better able to recognize where you've leaked your power and how to get it back so you don't have to keep replaying the painful events from the past in your mind or in your life. 
Why waste another minute walking around like the shell of who you once were, missing your joy, your optimism, and your confidence or your power when you don't have to? So click the link, try the free inner child meditation, and watch the Soul Retrieval Masterclass and put an end to all of that today.